Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope y'all guys are doing uh, doing well and you've gotten your week off to a great start. I'm actually leaving the gym, heading home. I'm going to uh, kind of start my wind out. Still have a little work to do. I'll do that at the office at the house. And then I'll sp hopefully spend some time with baby depending on how much work she has to do when she gets home. Uh, but look, uh, before we get started, uh, I want to remind you about the fundraiser that we have for Black Men Lead. If you follow me for any time, you know what Black Men Lead is. If you haven't followed me, uh, you need to know that it's just one arm it's, an, it's something I'm extremely passionate about. Probably my deepest passion is working with young black males. Uh, but I do a lot of other work in the community. Uh, but I designed a program called Black Man Lead that serves, number one, as a rite of passage uh, program for young black males from ages of 4 to 13. But also some, some, uh, functions as a wraparound service, uh, an extension of resources for young black males up to the age of 30. And we definitely need your support. So for those of you who believe in the work I do and know the depth at which I have invested myself over the last 30 years in being capable of doing the services and the works that I do, show some love and support because we have so many young black males out there who need it. Uh, and then our daughters need it because these are the young boys and males that they're gonna depend on to love and protect them. And it's a scary uh, proposition right now. So with that being said, show some love, show some support, and contribute to the work we're doing. With that being said, look, there has been an announcement uh, that, Ram, uh, that Rumble, which is a site I use for my more radical content that YouTube and other sites tend to ding and punish and censor for, uh, has offered Joe Rogan $100 million to leave Spotify and uh, use their platform uh, exclusively. I want to talk to you about understanding how things work. But I'm gonna start, first of all, with a disclaimer. I am not here to cape for, defend, or in any way sit up and say I'm in support of Joe Rogan. I do not condone the use of the N-word, not even for my own people. Uh, I, I don't believe that it, it serves any good. I don't believe that you can erase or drain the vitriolic uh, force that seeps in from it. Um, and so I don't support that. What I do want to talk about is what's really going on and why we need to understand how things work. Because there are two sides playing the middle and the middle are the masses. Okay, let me explain something to you. Those clips that are being looped over and over again with Joe Rogan using the N-word are being looped from N-words that Joe Rogan has been using for years. Anybody that has dealt with Joe Rogan for any time knows that Joe Rogan has been using the N-word for years. This isn't nothing new. This isn't something we just discovered. What happened is Joe Rogan brought a doctor who knew their stuff onto the show to talk about the Pope, the jab, whatever. And in a way that put a real black eye on a bunch of stuff that had been put out. And when that happened, all of a sudden he was the king of misinformation. Dude's been doing this stuff for I don't know how long. Joe Rogan, for you don't know, is some guy, uh, if, I, if I'm correct, 
and I, you know, I, I, I've known who he is for a long time because I follow certain things that he's done. Okay, started out as a comedian. Not sure in what art this works, but I know he was a comedian. Then he went into mixed martial arts, competed in mixed martial arts. Then he was on Fear Factor forever. Then he came out and started doing commentary. Uh, then he's then he got off into you know the podcast thing. All right. And so he is very radical in his approach. He is always looking to expose something. Uh, he has some good viewpoints. He has some stuff you don't agree with, just like almost everybody else. Uh, again, you know, I'm not a fan of his. I don't care for him. I'm talking about how things work. He just happens to be a topic. But I want to show you something. You, A lot of people who are going on board and talking about uh, finding ways to get Joe Rogan off of Spotify. That's the reason why Spotify has yet to actually remove him and is doing everything they can to stop the mass exodus of artists who are saying they're leaving because of Joe Rogan. Now, a couple of my podcasts on Spotify, by the way. Um, and I'm already on Rumble. But what happened is that's the reason why he's obviously generating a lot of revenue for the platform obviously there's a lot of people that like to him use the n-word i'm just being facetious right there and a little sarcastic the truth is there are a lot of people that like to hear a bunch of the stuff he talks about uh a bunch of stuff he talks about is actually relevant but here's the thing the reason that he hasn't been removed is because he makes money but let's be clear it's not because he used the n-word that they're trying to get him off now those who are pushing for him to be off it's the same people out there that actually were exposed by the doctor he had on there that called out a lot of the bs that's been pushing for over the last two years now i'm not gonna get into it because i know what platforms this will land on i'm not going any further than to point that out but check this out that's one side playing the middle but you got to understand that joe rogan's been playing the middle for for, for for as long as you can think he's study evolving study uh evolving and, and and transcending whatever he's done to move into something else what do i mean by that there are people out there that are extremely radical for the very purpose of stirring up cunt uh stirring up uh dissent why because it creates exposure it puts them apart and what they always what they understand is because of the way society is that's always going to be a place for them and so no matter how radical how crazy they are no matter how many people they offend there are some people that will actually enjoy what they do and see a value in it and rumble obviously sees the value in joe rogan because they offered him 100 million dollars just to leave spotify that doesn't even include the money he's going to make once he's there because you rumble is a monetized platform so similar to youtube um so here here's the thing You have to be able to understand how things work. You have to have a mind to think of your own and to think on your own. Number one, if you're really truly about pro-blackness, you haven't been listening to, to uh, Joe Rogan anyway. I, I don't I don't watch his podcast. There are certain things that people show in clips of something that was said. And depending on what the title is, I might sit in, but I am not subscribed to, nor do I listen to Joe Rogan. There are a couple of other people who have some good advice on the things they talk about, but I recognize them as being agents or I recognize them as being uh, people who are not supportive of the interests that I have at heart. And so I stay away from it. It's good for my spirit. It's good for uh, in, in, in me not being in areas that are supporting people who are actually harming people I care about. Uh, I'm not perfect at it because there's certain things I may not recognize. Uh, but what I do is I really don't get out there. And like if you're sitting up saying this and saying that, I'm not going to support you. So that was me. But so most of us aren't supporting him anyway. But they got us revved up to get him off of a situation. Now, here's the crazy thing. 
You know how many people that are sitting up actually saying they're leaving Spotify because Joe Rogan is a racist and and he's uh, he, he's spreading misinformation, which is the actual thing that they're worried about. They're talking about the misinformation more than they're racist because I guarantee you uh, at least 40% of the artists who are putting content on Spotify have done things that could be classified as racist. So, and some of the ones that are actually saying they're leaving because Joe Roy Rogan is racist and, and, and spreading misinformation. The whole big thing is he, he found someone who was credible that put a big question mark on a bunch of the things that were said. And so he put a target on his back and he knew he was gonna do that before. Let me tell you something. Just like the whole thing with Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg is by no stretch of the imagination stupid. I've paid attention to a lot of the things she does, a lot of things she says, a lot of things she says I don't agree with. There are some things she has said that I do agree with. But the one thing that has never crossed my mind about her is she's stupid. So when Whoopi Goldberg said what she said, Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg is older than me. And that means that she has a history of knowing how Jews respond to anything in which they feel slighted, especially when it comes to the Holocaust. She knew that would be pushed back and she did it anyway. Now, what the end game is for her, I am not sure. But what I can tell you is that she didn't do it thinking she was right and that nothing would go wrong and and, and, and X, Y, Z, and that, oh my God, I can't believe this doing to me. She's not a victim in this. She chose specifically to sit there and say that. Now, there are those who on a philosophical level will sit up and agree with the statement, which is that the Holocaust was not about race. Now, in a technical sense, you can make that argument because being a Jew is a choice, technically and realistically. Then you can go into a whole bunch of other things because you have Ethiopian Jews, you have European Jews, you have, you know, uh, uh, you know, let's not get into all of that. And there's a specific sect of Jews who you have to be concerned about offending. It's not the ones from Ethiopia. But nevertheless, Whoopi goes out and says, you know what? That's not about race. And all hell broke loose. And she was put in check. It's kind of funny because I'm pretty sure everybody understands that the very media platform she was provided was provided by those she was speaking on. I'm sure she knew it. Anybody with any knowledge of uh, media knows it, and yet she did that anyway. She's leveraging. Where she's going with it, I don't know, but I know she's smart enough that she plays her hand right. She's not gonna be canceled. She's got enough people behind her that's hot that she can create something on a spinoff and do something different. Okay, whatever it is, it's something she's doing. Uh, or maybe she just got tired and you know thought she would go out with a blaze of glory or whatever it is. Nevertheless, please understand that people aren't doing things and becoming victims. They are actually planning. What we should take away from this is that we need to learn how to plan. I'm not one for sitting up trying to figure out how to be big in the system. I'm more on how about we create our own? How about instead of trying to figure out how to, but when we're moving through the system and responding to things th from the system, we need to be able to know how things work. We are constantly manipulated because we don't understand how things work, because we don't know when we're being played, when we're being used, when we're being leveraged, and the entire thing is now all this stuff about getting Joe Rogan off of Spotify ends up landing him a minimum of $100 million because the pot has been sweetened by 
a litmus test, which was the incitement of the race car. That was the litmus test. So how popular is Joe Rogan? We know that there are going to be some black people going to be hot. We know some other people are going to be hot. But there are a lot of people who are hot simply because he calls a spade a spade a lot. Um, and they're going to be upset about the fact that he's probably stepped on some toes and probably theirs at some point. And so they'll make him waves. But at the end of the day, the litmus test was Joe Rogan just got called out for racist behavior and literally a part of the world where crazy said they're not going to support Spotify as long as it's on there. Artists on Spotify said we're taking ourselves off Spotify, which means that they can lose revenue because Spotify is that big. And then here comes Rumble. And Rumble says, we're going to pay you $100 million if you leave Spotify and you come to us. Now, here's something that I'm going to just throw out there that a lot of people won't even think about. What's the first thing that came to my mind? Have you ever thought that maybe someone representing someone from Rumble is the one who orchestrated the campaign to get Joe Rogan kicked off of Spotify? to stir up the madness, to get an idea, to prove just how popular are, not necessarily, let's not say popular, let's say how financially beneficial it is to have him, that you don't think that happens, it happens all the time. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna do this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drive the value up. Then in driving the value up, I'm gonna make an offer that's, un and then now you're over there. And then Spotify could have actually been the one who did it, you know, by bringing in someone and hiring them to sit up and create this madness and this pushback and to drive interest because it's actually going to drive Spotify as well. So Spotify is going to benefit. Even if he doesn't go to Rumble, Rumble is not going to benefit because there's a bunch of people who didn't know what Rumble was until now. So Rumble's going to benefit because they just offered Joe Rogan $100 million to come over there. That's big. People now are going to check out and see. People who don't know who Rumble is. Like I said, I've been on Rumble for a while. As soon as they start censoring me about the stuff I was saying about this this pandemic, I start putting that stuff on Rumble. Okay, so, but there's a bunch of people who don't know what Rumble is. And now they're going to look. I guarantee you what you're going to see is if Rumble isn't, public already it's going to go public and it's going to soar for a while because now rumble is de developing an online presence an online awareness that it did not have the game is being played and you are being played within it and the thing is you need to learn how to create your own space you need to learn how to operate and do your own thing instead of being moved by other people constantly you need to learn how to move other people and I don't mean you have to do it in a manipulative, controlling, advantageous way. I mean, learn how to be a force that moves people. You can move people in a way that everybody eats, that everybody benefits. But what you can't do is get caught up and people are eating off you while you starving. And yet you're fighting their battles and you're, that has to stop. And it has to stop. I just had to drop in on that. Now, uh, again, we are in the midst of a fundraiser and we are trying to raise money for something real, something that we need to be out there doing, something that can make a difference. We're having a, a mental health crisis with young black men. We're having a situation where uh, the violence is being taken to another level because we're not confronting it. We're not properly socializing young black men. One of the things that the Black Men League Rite of Passage Initiative does is properly socialize young black males into black manhood. And black manhood is a unique experience, different from any other man, uh, man on the planet and unique specifically to the culture here in the U.S. And that's what we develop these young men 
uh, young boys into young men, into men, understanding. Because if you don't properly socialize them into it, the force that they must face in opposition will destroy them. Um, you're, you, you, you've got to increase dropout rate, which leads to an increase incarceration rate. You've got an increase in violence amongst each other. You've got an increase in violence on uh, intimate partners. All of these things lead to a devastation within the community. And the thing is, we have the mechanisms and the means to positively infect those, affect those numbers, to positively, positively change what we've been seeing. But it's up to us. It's going to have to uh, be a massive effort. And right now, we're not getting it. So I am challenging anyone who's watching this to come on board and support the work we're doing. On that note, I am out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.